Hi, I'm Heather from Handbook Tubes. Today is my top five reads of October. In October, I read 34 books out of 34. 12 of them were five stars. Of the 12, four were rereads, so I'm not counting them in what I picked. And then here are the top five. Let's start with The Devil's Bargain by Ryan Fox. This is an erotic horror novella. It is male-male between a demon and a black man who buys a grimoire at an auction. I was hooked on the very first page, loved the atmosphere, loved the writing style, and really was just like rooting for this guy. I really like him. He's like a nerd a little bit. I had I just I liked him. Right, so then he ends up summoning this demon with the grimoire and demon basically wants him to be his vessel and they end up with the guy getting impregnated and they live happily ever after with their little family like in the suburbs i just loved it it was so hot again really liked the writing really liked the sex scenes really liked the main character as well as the demon just a a fan i'm a fan <laughs> Definitely short, like he was having some trouble with his best friend and we don't get a scene with that resolved or anything like that, but loved it. Loved it. It was perfect for October. It would be great for November. If it sounds interesting at all, you should read it. <laughs> Then I have Real Love, which is Love After number three by Alexandria House. This is the third and final book in a series that follows three best friends as they find love. And this one, she is a loan officer for a bank. She has this really hot black guy walk in and she has to explain to him why his loan has been denied and she doesn't have any control over whether it's denied or not and he gets really mad at her and is like you are wasting your life. You're not helping other black people. You're just wasting your life in this job and that like really bothers her. Well then she ends up getting fired from the bank and also ends up running into this guy a couple more times and they kind of make up. He is a tattoo artist who's trying to open a tattoo shop and she, after getting fired, ends up having some other opportunities open to her and basically is trying to make a difference like he told her that she should be. And as them falling in love, there's some surprising drama. <laughs> There is a content warning for a predatory relationship between the teacher and an underage student, neither one of the main characters being the teacher, but if that's something you really want to avoid, maybe avoid it, but you just felt for them so much and you get a little bit of vigilante style justice, which I love because I'm vindictive. So that is a definite content warning in there and just strange relationships with parents and things like that. But their relationship, so good, so sweet. They were really, really lovely. Next I have Magic Dreams, which is Kate Daniels 4.5 by Lona Andrews. I had never read this novella before. It follows Dolly and Jim. Dolly is a blind white tiger, legally blind, that is a vegetarian and she is a brilliant magician but incredibly clumsy and awkward. And Jim is Curran, who is Kate's mate. It's his best friend. He's the cat alpha. He's the head of security for the pack. And he also has been Kate's partner in the Mercenary Guild since the series started. So he's a main character, someone that we are very familiar with. And he and Dolly have kind of been circling each other. And it's just kind of frustrating. It's like, why aren't they doing anything? Well, Jim runs into something and basically he's dying unless Dolly can save him. And she takes him home to her mother and her mother is doing this whole old Asian lady who doesn't understand what's going on act. And when she finds out that Jim speaks, I think it's Indonesian if I recall correctly, and he actually speaks it because he wanted to be able to communicate with Dolly, which was so sweet. She kind of drops the act and is like, hey, he's dying. You should find a different, a different guy. And Dolly's like, no, I love him. He has to be the one. We have to save him. And so they're trying to save his life. And they finally end up being a couple in this book and it was so sweet. I really liked the magical creatures that we ran into because we're dealing with a lot of Asian mythology in this book. They go to Chinatown, run into some creatures there, all sorts of things. 
very interesting novella. My favorite of all the novellas that I've read so far. This one was definitely the best one. Really just thoroughly enjoyed it. Highly recommend reading it, not skipping it if you're reading the Kate Daniels series, which as I'm sure you all know by now is an urban fantasy series that you should read if it holds any interest at all because it's amazing. Then I had The Obelisk Gate, which is the Broken Earth trilogy number two by N.K. Jeminson. This is an adult fantasy series that follows a few different POVs. Every book, although they're not always the same POVs, but we have the earth is just a disaster zone. They have the seasons. And anytime there's a season, almost everybody dies. You're kind of hunkering down for it. We have origins who have the magical capability of working with the earth, but they are treated as less than human, as tools, as a danger, and just horrific abuse. Like everybody that we're following is an origin. And in this book, I liked it more. I didn't think it was quite as heavy as the first book. You are f more familiar with the characters and I was really invested in what was happening with them. I cried again. <laughs> I have so many theories. I don't know what's happening, but this is a really interesting adult fantasy series. The beginning I feel like might be difficult to get into. Just give it time, right? And I really, really am enjoying the writing and trying to put pieces together figure out what's going on even though I'm probably wrong. It's, it's okay. And then lastly I have The Executioner which is Professionals number 10 by Jessica Gaziella. This is my favorite Jessica Gaziella series that follows the Fixer Agency and here they have been hired to kill somebody who or no they weren't even hired. Someone in one of their negotiations basically did something unforgivable and so they're going to take him out. So that's where the executioner comes in. It's Bellamy. He's actually kind of an eccentric billionaire and he was in black ops and needs to kill but he only kills people who deserve it. So he works at the fixer agency even though obviously he doesn't need any money. He also drugs and kidnaps his friends and sends them on once in a lifetime vacations on a regular basis. Well, he runs into our female main character on the job and drugs her. <laughs> he takes her on a vacation where they kind of start an affair and she is just his match and is giving him a run for his money and it's so good. There was one plot hole where I was like, why would you of all people not have any weapons? But you know, <laughs> It made for an interesting read. Lots of action. You have a rich jewelry designer who grew up incredibly poor with a drug addicted mother in Baltimore in a bad neighborhood and that made for a very interesting character who who was a uh, it's perfect match so I was very happy with this installment in the series. I've been really looking forward to Bellamy's book since he was introduced and it did not disappoint. These are my favorite reads of October. Let me know your favorite read. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.